Hey everybody, welcome to the channel and welcome to the new year. I hope you're having a great day. My name is Eric and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how we made a fermented hot sauce using the world's hottest chili peppers. Now, just to give you a little backstory, back in January of 2019, I met a farmer who told me he had some farmland available and I thought it would be an awesome idea to give him some of the world's hottest chili pepper seeds to grow on his farm. And as the months passed by in 2019 and our pepper plants started getting bigger, the Carolina Reapers, the Trinidad Scorpions, the Marugas, the Ghosts, the Nagas, the Chocolates, and everything in between, we started collecting peppers. And around September, October of 2019, we began fermenting them. Little did we know that only a few months later, we were gonna be under a pretty strict quarantine. And while we were at home, enjoying our newfound isolation, our hot sauce fermented. We started off in the kitchen, we moved it to the pantry, and there it sat fermenting nicely, hiccuping every 15 or 20 minutes, and we basically forgot about it until today, where at the end of this video, you're gonna watch me taste our fermented, quarantine hot sauce made with the world's hottest chili peppers. Let me show you how we made it. We weren't really sure how many peppers we were gonna get from the farm. Uh, this was our first batch, and it ended up weighing around four, four and a half pounds. Check out that pepper, that's the Peach Carolina Reaper. Very cool pepper. Uh, not only did we get the Peach Carolina Reaper, but we also got, you know, the red version, the chocolate version, a lot of different varieties of the Reaper. But we also got the Ghost, the Maruga Brain. We also got the, you know, Seven Pot, the Naga, uh, the Butch Tea, the Trinidad Scorpion. So a lot of different uh, spicy peppers and a lot of different chocolate varieties, which I absolutely love. The first thing I wanted to do was create a 2.5% brine solution. So all we're doing here is weighing out some water. And then I'm going to add some kosher salt to the equivalent of 2.5%. And in the description box below, I'll have a link to the recipe, which will explain the process in the event that you want to make a fermented hot sauce yourself. So we're just going to give that a stir to dissolve the salt, and then we're going to give our peppers a quick rinse. We don't want to wash our peppers. There is a lot of good lactic acid producing bacteria on the surface of these peppers, so we don't wanna wash that off. So I'm just gonna give them a quick little dunk just to remove any dirt that's on the surface, and then I'm gonna place them in an area to drain. So we've got that completely finished. This is what our water looks like after we've just given them, like I said, a quick little dunk. We've got some dirt removed and that's sufficient. So our peppers are now ready to get chopped up and I'm just gonna be using a food processor. Now, looking back at this particular process, I would have done this first step a little differently but you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. So I'm gonna add some black garlic. Black garlic is gonna add a little sweetness and a little umami. We're gonna throw our peppers in there, close it off, and get ready because your food processor will now become a pepper spray generator as your peppers aerosolize throughout your kitchen. So just make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. Now, like I said earlier, I would have done this a little differently. This is a little too fine for me as it's not really necessary to chop up the peppers that finely. So we're gonna go ahead and start the fermentation process. And to begin, I'm going to sanitize everything that we're gonna be using to ferment with a iota four sanitizing solution. This is basically an iodine solution that you just let sit for a few minutes and I'm using a one gallon pickle jar. I'm also gonna be using an airlock and all that's gonna get sanitized. And basically that's it. At this point, we're just gonna add our chopped up peppers and then we're going to fill it up with our two and a half percent brine solution until we get about an inch or so over the top of those peppers. We do wanna ferment this anaerobically and that just simply means in the absence of oxygen. So we're gonna put a lid on that with an airlock and that's gonna keep oxygen from coming into our fermenting vessel and as gas is being released, our little airlock will begin to hiccup and the fermentation begins. At this point, we're just gonna leave it in there and let it do its thing. But about two weeks into this fermenting, we had a major change in plans because our little pepper plants started to produce. And we ended up receiving about 35 total pounds of the world's hottest peppers. So we had to change fermenting vessels. We just ended up putting everything into a much larger crock pot and we processed everything the exact same way. Gave them a nice little dunk. We added a two and a half percent brine solution, but this time we didn't chop the peppers up. We just sliced the peppers, which was completely sufficient. And for those of you who have wondered where the other guy was in the two guys in a cooler team, you're about to meet him.
<laughs> that was a tough day in the kitchen. So all of our peppers have been cleaned and sliced. We're just going to be adding this to a 20 liter fermenting crock pot. And we're just going to go ahead and place some cabbage leaves over the top. That's going to help keep the peppers below the brine. And now we're adding our two and a half percent brine solution, basically till it's above our stones by about an inch. We're going to close it off add a little water to the rim, and the fermentation begins. We're gonna ferment this in a relatively cool area, 55 to 75 Fahrenheit or 13 to 24 Celsius, and you're gonna see the most active elements of your fermentation in, in the beginning, in the first month or so. This is what it should sound like. It's now two years later and time to make some hot sauce. So if you're gonna be fermenting peppers at home, you can ferment for however long you want. Uh, ideally, you wanna do it for at least 30 days, but you can let it go six months, a year, three years if you want. And all we're gonna do now is separate our pepper mash from the brine. So we're just gonna run that through a strainer right quick and then place that into a bucket. So I'm gonna do that a couple times. And as you can see right here, we ended up with about 10 liters of condensed pepper mash. At this point, we're just gonna run it through a blender and we're gonna add some of that brine back in. That's gonna give us a little saltiness. We're also gonna add a little red wine vinegar for acidity. And here in a minute, we're gonna add some xanthan gum to stabilize it. So at this point, you can make a lot of decisions. You know, if you wanna add some sweetness, you can add some honey or sugar. That'll tone down a little bit of that spiciness. I didn't wanna do that. This is xanthan gum and we're adding it while we're blending it. And that's gonna help stabilize our sauce. So let's just give it a blend, uh, check for consistency, and then give it a taste right quick and see where it's at. We're just gonna test for salt and test for acidity. And uh, here we go. That could definitely use more salt. <laughs> oh, that's a new hot sauce? <laughs> you want to try it? <laughs> oh, shit. <sure. laughs> Let's try it. Oh. It's pretty good. That's <laughs> crazy. It's crazy. After each batch that was blended, we're adding it to 20 liter pots. And I ended up filling two 20 liter pots, mostly full. And at this point, everyone in the kitchen is looking at me a little crazy because I'm making everyone taste this every few minutes as we make our final adjustments. So red wine vinegar for acidity, uh, salt or the brine solution for saltiness. And I do also want this to be a shelf stable product. So we're gonna pasteurize this before we bottle it. And I do wanna test the pH because I want the pH to be under 4.0 and it looks like we are at 3.17, this is the Opera Instruments pH meter. So it looks like we're good to go there. We do pasteurize this at 180 degrees Fahrenheit or 82.2 Celsius for 10 minutes and we place them into sterilized bottles. Now you don't have to do this, you could just store your hot sauce in the refrigerator, but doing this will increase the shelf life and since I don't have refrigerator space for seven gallons of hot sauce, this seemed like the best idea. Two years have passed. 35 pounds of peppers, consisting of 20 of the world's hottest varieties placed into a fermenter to ferment while we're under quarantine, getting to know each other in ways we never knew we wanted. The quarantine is now over, and it's now time to taste our quarantine hot sauce. And if I had to be completely honest right now, I'm feeling a little apprehensive about this particular tasting which is normally not an issue for me because I like spicy food, but for some reason, this particular bottle of hot sauce has got me feeling a little anxious. Let's just take a look at it. I'll describe what I'm looking at, and then we'll give it a smell, and then just fix ourselves a heaping spoonful of it and give it a taste. And uh, first and foremost, I'm loving the thickness. It's not too thick, not too thin. It's not gonna pour out like a Tabasco, but it's not gonna be chunky like a salsa, so I like that middle of the road. One of the great things about making your own hot sauce is that you can control that based off of how much, you know, brine you put in, vinegar and peppers and so on and so forth. Uh, I am noticing some broken up seeds in the bottle itself. That's giving it kind of like a really cool rustic look. I like that. That's probably just gonna to add to the spice element. And uh, let's just go ahead and give it a smell. 
See what that's all about. <laughs> Ooh, whoa, that is scary. I mean, you can just smell the spice billowing off the top of this. Ooh, I don't know about that. Um, spice aside, I'm definitely picking up some really nice umami notes. I mean, that could come from the black garlic that we added. We did add a substantial amount of black garlic. It could also be from the fermenting. I mean, the fermenting is going to add its own complexity to the peppers. Smoky, mm. a little fruity, a little citrusy. Okay. And these are all characteristics uh, of the unique peppers uh, that we did add. I mean, you've got the chocolate peppers, which tend to add smoky elements. You've got the ghost chili, the reaper, the maruga, the trinidad. Those are all, you know, going to be extremely spicy, but very fruity, citrusy qualities as well. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Woo. Let's do it. Let's just do it. All right. Here it goes. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I just want you to know before I eat this that in the production of this hot sauce, 35 pounds of peppers ended up producing something like seven and a half gallons of hot sauce. Now, because we pasteurized it and because the pH is uh, 3.1 or something like that, uh, this is completely shelf stable. So we don't store this in the refrigerator. We've got this in bottles uh, in our pantry and we've got them in gallon jugs and we kind of have it everywhere. So I sure do hope it's super tasty. All right. I feel like I need a towel. All right, here we go. Bottoms up. <coughs> That's too hot. I wish I could send all of you some of this. It's too spicy for me. <sighs> wow. This is spicy. I mean, I would almost go so far as to say it's unedible. Unless you just like extreme heat. The flavor is good. It's got some really nice acidity. The salt level is where it should be. Um, the peppers are bringing what the peppers bring. And in this case, it's just this unbearable waves of heat that just continue to billow. I mean, it, it starts at the tongue and the different peppers are kind of doing different things. My stomach right now is killing me. I don't know how much of this I'm editing out, but I've basically been moaning and groaning for the last 10 minutes on camera because... This thing is unreal. I mean, I'm sweating, I'm dizzy, my face is numb, and uh, in essence, we've made seven gallons of a hot sauce that you can only add a drop or two to your dish. So that's all I got for you today, folks. Thanks for watching. If you got any questions about today's project, about today's fermented hot sauce, leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, or you got anything out of it, a great big thumbs up would be helpful. And if you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. As you can see behind me, we have got some South African biltong on the horizon, and I can't wait to share that project with you. Thanks a lot for being here. See you next week. Bye-bye.